All right, climbing stairs. You are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you can climb either one or two steps. And how many distinct ways can you climb up to the top? So you can see this one's attempted uh, again. Um, yeah, I'm going through the ones that I tried once and it didn't work right away and I gave up. Um, but uh, I don't know, I'm feeling good right now. So let's go through it. You're climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Okay, so for example, if you're two steps away from the top, then you can take one and one or two steps. So you have two possible ways to do it. If you're three steps away, then you could go one, 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 two, or two, one. So right away, you can kind of notice a pattern because if you're one step away, then that's one step plus one plus one, then or one step plus two. So it's just basically one step plus whatever n equals two is. If you're three step, um, so. Basically, it's it's kind of recursive, and as I say this, I totally realize something. So, the problem with my uh, my prior solution that you're not seeing right now because I am too much of a coward to to post my failure is was essentially recursion. Because that would work. It, the problem is that it, the time limit exceeded. In fact, I bet that we can see it right here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can see that right here. Okay, so it's not totally gone. N, is le if it's less than or equal to 2, return N. Because we know 1 is 1 and we know 2 is 2. And we know that you can't be 0. N e can't equal 0. So then from there, basically, you just recurse by saying, okay, return the same function, but add n minus 1 to n minus 2. Um, actually, I don't even know if that would have worked, because I think it needs to do like 1 plus that. No, actually, that should, that should work. I think I did it. I want to say I did it by hand, and it worked. But I could be totally wrong. Either way, what if instead of doing recursion, we basically just cached any math that we do um, by making maybe like a map? And then we work our way up. the staircase so the other I mean the other thing uh, the other thing that I tried that didn't end up working I deleted it right before I started this video was to basically try to recreate the pattern because my understanding is that it should be the Fibonacci sequence because I think that it should be like so n n equals 1 is 1 n equals 2 is 2 n equals 3 is 3 which is 1 plus 2 and then what's n equals 4? Well, you can either take one step and be n equals 3. So that's 3. Or two steps and be n equals 2. So that's 2. So that's 2 plus 3 is 5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 5. And then what's n equals 5? Um... It would be, you could either take one step and be n equals 4, which we now know is 5, or two steps and be n equals 3, which is 3, so that's 8, and 5 plus 3 is 8, it's, it's yeah, you just, it's, you know, it's the Fibonacci sequence, it's what, it's the last two numbers added together, and I tried to recreate that, but, um, I don't know why, I couldn't get to work, maybe I should just do that right now, that would make more sense. Um, yeah, actually, maybe I should just pursue that idea. I forget why it wasn't working. I think I just must have, like, flipped something. The other idea I had was to basically do, like, rec the recursion took too long. But what if we did, like, the recursion...
like virtually we just basically okay so once we get and once we find out what n equals three is we store that in a dictionary and then next time that we get down to three we can just access what we know the answer is already but i don't think that's necessary i think that we can just do the fibonacci sequence so to be clear so we have so we figured out the pattern so n equals one is one n equals two is two three five eight thirteen twenty one so on okay so I feel like we're gonna need this because usually anytime you start a loop like this to try to start some sort of pattern it doesn't work for like one because you need to rely on like okay yeah so the loop here is gonna require you to add at least two numbers so if it's one then you can't do that without breaking something because if you try to say well what comes before one nothing comes before one so if n equals one return n return one yeah if otherwise let's see Otherwise, we have 4i in range 1 to n. Okay. I'm going to put down like... N, let's say N, M, 2, and N, M, 1. Those are going to represent N, the current, no, no, no. Basically, we need to, for every iteration, we need to keep track of the prior two numbers. Okay, so we have n equals 1, return 1. I have a really dumb idea. This goes up, well, it goes up to 45. For a second, I was thinking, why not just hard code the values that we know they're going to be? It's just the Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> um. I'm sorry, I had to test this. I'm just trying to find a good list of these Fibonacci numbers <laughs> um, that I can just copy. Ah, uh, what am I doing? I'm sorry. Sorry for the delay. That's not what this is about anyway.
Okay, actually, you know what? We don't need to... even check for the one because we can just set the we do need to set a dummy value like a, a base value for these two so let the, let's set this to be zero and this to be one we're gonna say M And then holder equals NM1 because we're going to update NM1. NM1, of course, staying for N minus 1. Um, M minus 1 equals basically, so for the record, we're, th th that's to represent this function right here. Where it's f n equals f n minus one plus f n minus two. That's why these are named like that. Equals m one plus n m two. Okay, and now n m two. A little musical chairs, sort of equals holder okay and then return N M one plus N M two. I'm like re sorry, my brain is moving slow as I'm working on this one. So, for example, we have zero one. If I if N equals one, then this never even executes because the range is one to one non inclusive. So that doesn't execute. So it just is zero plus one. So it works for n plus n equals one. Does it work for n equals two? This goes from range one. So you say, okay, n equals one, the holder. So then n, so these be two become one and one. And so the solution is two. So that works for n equals 2. Does it work for n equals 3? And if it works for that, I'm going to run it and um, move on. Um, if it works, okay, so so we know that we got 1 and 1. Okay. For n equals 3, so we have, this is the second iteration. The holder, is, the holder becomes, the holder becomes 1. One become well okay the no, um that one becomes one plus one is two and that one becomes one so that's yeah I think that works what that should work come on work for me oh come on I don't want to pay you money. Okay, does it work for them all? One ring to rule them all. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Look at that memory of... <laughs> beats 100% of people in memory. I'm starting to think that these stats don't really matter on, like, things that are that fast. Okay, so that was fun because you got to see me question ethically whether I should just copy the first 45 values. <laughs> <laughs> or well and then from there I was just trying to <laughs> work a bit by bit through the process of a Fibonacci sequence I think it's because I tried earlier and I forgot like to do the last step which would be this thing right here 
But this is actually a cute solution because basically it just like it ends with the final addition. And then that way you don't even have to have a special case like what if n equals 1 or something. Makes sense to me, um, I think. I don't know if I'm getting smarter or dumber. But you know what? That's what life is all about. I think. I don't know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.